I always said Heisenberg was not the man they were betting on to develop a bomb. And he wasn't. Himmler didn't really particularly like him. Diebno was the man to look at. And when you then hear, you look at the introduction of what happened to people and what these various German nuclear scientists were doing after the war, it's not even mentioned in the papers that Diebno patented a nuclear propulsion for huge tanker ships a few years after the war ended and many other things. There's a lot more to this. When the Allies found the German nuclear research laboratory in Heigelock, they were extremely astonished to find it consisted only of reinforced concrete reactor built in a cave, and too small to be critical anyway. Now, suddenly they were going through considerable trouble to get these same scientists to cooperate. How could the Germans help them when they apparently knew nothing? The frequently held view that Germany lacked the resources, the necessary nuclear physicists, anyway, doesn't become any more true just because you repeat it in every mainstream documentary. Heisenberg provided the basic idea, but scientist Kurt Diebner was an extremely good practitioner. Remember his name for now. There were also many others, such as Gerlach, Becky, Esau, Rebin, just to name a few, and the Germans had unnoticed by the Allies, built up a considerable stock of U-235 and heavy water as well. About two tons of each, in fact. But we are now told that they never had enough uranium or heavy water. The notion that there was not enough heavy water is one of the most popular arguments against a German nuclear bomb. But there is several parts of that myth that are problematic and never mentioned. 